Ah, so let us continue from where we uh, left it uh, yesterday during our previous uh, session. So just for a recap, uh, in, uh, in the previous session, we were doing an explore, exploratory data analysis uh, and uh, our data was for hotel bookings and uh, our data contained uh, booking information for a city hotel and a resort hotel and it, it uh, included different attributes uh, such as the, when the bookings were made, the length of stay, the number of adults, children, among other things. So basically what we are doing, uh, what we were doing for that uh, session was all about exploratory data analysis. So we were uh, trying to uh, find more insights about our our data. And we did quite a lot of things. Uh, for example, we compared the customer type and the reservation for the different types of uh, hotels, the reservation status for the different customers. Uh, we also did uh, uh, an analysis uh, for concerning the lead time comparison between different hotels. So basically it was um, quite a, a good uh, way to uh, maybe conduct an uh, exploratory data analysis in such a way that um, you, you can gain uh, further, further uh, let's say, uh, insights, information, conclusions about your data. So uh, since this was uh, quite a, a lengthy analysis, so I tried to break it into at least uh, two sessions so that um, we can uh, quite cover a lot of things. So this is the second session, and so let's uh, continue on from where we left it yesterday. So before we get started again, uh, please consider subscribing uh, to this uh, channel. Hit that notification bell so that uh, you never miss any of our video updates. Once again, thank you for your time, and let's uh, get started. Let's get uh, started. So uh, for this, uh, we will start uh, with the another type of analysis, which is about uh, room type uh, preference. So for the room type uh, preference, uh, basically what you're trying to, the objective for us uh, conducting this uh, test or analysis is that we are going to examine the distribution of uh, reserved, room, reserved room types for either city hotel as well as the resort hotel to understand the uh, guest preferences, okay? So, let me just copy, let me just uh, copy that. So basically we are trying to examine the difference of reserved room types for city and resort hotel to understand the uh, guest uh, preference, okay? So it's all about a uh, room type uh, preference, okay? So let's uh, see what we can do with that. So we can start, let's say, uh, room, yeah, room type, uh, room type uh, preference, preference, uh, room type uh, distribution. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be grouping by room type distribution. So group by uh, what is the hotel hotel type uh, and the uh, and the reserved. So we are using the the reserved room, the room that the guest reserved, the reserved uh, room type. And then can, uh, so for this, you can just uh, uh, supposed to be outside. So dot uh, dot size then uh, dot set index set uh, set index. Uh, you can use the uh, you can use the unstuck form. So you can use the unstuck function so unstuck then inside the brackets we can build underscore value zero so maybe if we have none uh, none null if we don't have 
uh, any value you can just fill that space empty space with a zero okay then uh, you can just go to this again room type distribution uh, then in a uh, room type uh, distribution and from here we can now set uh, index you can also set index from here but uh, this will be quite a lengthy line of code so you do that in the just do that in the next uh, uh, oh, so we need I need to execute this code from above so I'll just go oh, Google Colors you can just use a, a shortcut uh, control F9 so it will just execute the code uh, from the top up to the cell you uh, up to the last cell so for that uh, this is the this is the result the result we are getting so for the result room type see this is just an index so for the hotel type city uh, and resort hotel so for the result uh, result uh, room type we have a b c d e f g h l and p and from the look of things you can see how the guest uh, the room preference according to uh, the guests for the different type of hotel so for example you can see that uh, room a you can see that uh, for city hotel it had uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, guests so most of the guests uh, prefer this uh, room a and for the resort hotel uh, the most preferred room again is uh, room a okay so we're just going to repeat the same uh, now is we're going to do that for uh, now this one was for the the room that when a guest is making a booking the room that they reserve but due to uh, challenges of a booking and all that so maybe there was uh, an assigned room uh, due to uh, a given challenge okay so so that we are going to uh, do compare that uh, using the assigned room type uh, attribute so so for that again so this was, this was the room that uh, the guest was uh, was um, was assigned to after uh, arriving to either the city hotel or the uh, the resort hotel so let's do that and see uh, the most assigned room so assigned room type uh, df group uh, uh, group by Okay. Mm. Assigned. This is the assigned uh, room type. And room type. Let me just copy this size. Uh, but, uh, something different just sit here side room and you can just copy this again so we just do dot reset index so we set index But reset index okay that's okay then we just execute that so in terms of the assigned room type uh, you can see that um, for the city hotel and the resort hotel again the assigned room type uh, room a was the most preferred room that was assigned to the guests okay uh, at 2000 uh, followed by room d at around uh, 12,000 and for and for um, a resort hotel you can see it's about uh, 12,000 room A followed by I think uh, room D at 9,000 so there is quite some assemblies there so another metric that we can also analyze is about uh, the average uh, waiting average days in waiting list So I think this is just a uh, self this you can just explain this uh, self explanatory
So he doesn't need a lot of uh, guesswork here and there. So we just please and press it. Yes, use another set. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to Mechanical Analytics. I'm very, very pleased to have you back once again. again. In today's video, we on the waiting list, so let's the average waiting list. So the first thing is about let me try to change. Uh, data the blackboard you can use okay so we are going to display the average days so we calculate the average days in waiting list for each hotel type so average waiting list days so we are going to group by hotel type and the days in waiting list then we average that with the mean then we just reset our index uh, and when we generate a new series uh, this one column uh, that will be missing a column name so when we say name and provide a name it is that uh, we are going to provide a name for that column that will, will be missing uh, a column name then after that we just display uh, our result so when it comes to average uh, a waiting list of days you can see that uh, it's about 0.9 almost a day for the city hotel and about 0.3 uh, for the resort hotel, okay. So, so uh, if I'm going to make uh, a booking or a, a reservation, it will take uh, probably uh, a day for for me to get a feedback to ensure that uh, feedback saying that that uh, I've reserved uh, a room in in the city hotel. And if for the resort uh, it's about 0 0.3, that's about uh, that's about uh, after six hours. So I think for the resort hotel, I think it's uh, the in terms of uh, getting back to you, uh, confirming that uh, you are successfully booked for a place. The resort hotel it takes a little bit uh, lesser time compared to the city hotel. So that's the insight you can get from there. So maybe let me just uh, include that here. So from here we can say add another text. You can say that. So for the insight. The insights here we can say that uh, it uh, takes uh, less time uh, to get confirmation uh, from resort hotel. Uh, let's say confirmation for booking from resort hotel than city hotel. So that's what we can that's what we, that's the insight we get from there so after this uh let's move uh, to another uh, i'll move on to another um, another attribute that's all about uh, the average daily rate so we're going to be doing some few analysis about the average daily rate then after this i think we will just end with the time series analysis where we compare uh, dates and other metrics. So for the average uh, daily rates, so average daily rates. Uh, so for that, uh, so let's see. So for the average daily rates, you can see that uh, uh, the average da daily rate. Uh, uh, Average daily rate is average uh, daily rate as defined by dividing the sum of all lodging transactions by the total number of staying nights. So the objective for this is to determine the average daily rate for each hotel type. So we are going to, de to find out that and also maybe to identify any significant difference in average daily rate between the different hotel types. So we are going to analyze that and uh, find out what we are dealing uh, for, the, for the two hotel types. So the first objective uh, basically what you are trying to do is to finding the average daily rate for each hotel type 
So average daily rates, we are, we are grouping our data by hotel type and the average uh, daily rate. Then we find the mean because it's the average. Then we will set an index because we're generating a new series. Then when we execute this cell, uh, we can see that uh, the, we are getting the hotel type, city or uh, resort hotel, and the average daily rate for each hotel. So we can see for the city hotel, the average daily rate is about uh, 111.3. Uh, well, for the resort hotel, we can see that it's about uh, 99.4. So in terms of uh, this, we can see that um, Uh, uh, so the average daily rate for the hotel type is higher than the than that of the uh, resort hotel. So let's uh, uh, plot a graph for this. So when we plot When we plot uh, the bar graphs for this, uh, we can see that uh, how they are uh, looking. So for the city hotel again, we saw it's 101 as the average daily rate. But the average daily rate for the resort hotel is uh, 99.44. Okay? So that's some uh, visualization for that. So in our second objective was uh, all about uh, determining or identifying the any significant difference in ADR between the different hotel types. So that's what we are going to be doing in the next step. So at first we need to do some uh, separation of data. So let's uh, separate. So let's separate. So let's separate uh, ADR data for hotel type for each hotel type. So we can say. ADR for city hotel. So DF, uh, DF. Then you can just say hotel type. Hotel type. Uh, then we are getting the ADR for the city hotel. So city hotel. Then uh, what you are comparing that with, what we are interested in is the average daily daily rate for that. So again, average daily rates. Just going to repeat the same, but for but for the resort hotel. So city just changes to resort resort hotel. DR is resort hotel. Hotel type is the same. Here we just change this to resort hotel. Then average daily rate just remains the same. Then after we have done our separation, we can then perform uh, an independent t-test. Independent t-test. So the independent t-test will be interested with the t-statistic. T-statistic. And as well as the p-value. So that's the important information that we want from that. Uh, we will use the t-test t independent uh, function, so t-test uh, independent and uh, ADR uh, CT is just the CT, CT, uh, ADR CT hotel and ADR uh, resort. Just wait for that. ADR Resort Hotel. Okay. So city ADR City Hotel ADR Resort. Hotel. So that's okay. So after we have done our performer t test, we are going to print our results. So we're going to print our results. So print. You can say uh, t. T test test uh, results uh, then now uh, we can uh, print the 
with these statistics. Statistic. This statistic. Then uh, we print the p-value. So after we have uh, printed our results, we then then to uh, uh, test if there is significant uh, difference. So for that, uh, we can use the if uh, statement. So if the conditional statement uh, if so p value uh, is less than 0 0.05, that means at 95 percent 95 percent confidence level, then we are going to print um, statement saying that. Uh, there is a significant uh, difference uh, in ADR uh, between city hotel and resort hotel. Okay. Uh, else, mm, so else can say that uh, and print that uh, there is uh, no significant difference in this disease so this just this statement remains the same so let's execute this cell and see what we are getting so we can say that we are getting a t result uh, t statistics of 30.6 and a p value of 1.3 Three seven uh, raised to power two five. So that means that uh, this value, the p value is uh, less than zero point zero five. Then uh, we can say that there is a significant difference in ADR between city hotel and resort hotel. So uh, for the insights, so we can conclude and state that um, uh, the T statistic, uh, the T, T statistic statistic uh, value of uh, this uh, thirty point seven. Let's say thirty point seven. Uh, uh, the T statistic is uh, thirty point. Seven. While uh, the the p value is uh, while p let's say just p is less than zero point zero five. Uh, the t statistic is thirty point seven, while the p value is less than zero point zero five. You can say that uh, this indicates uh, uh, that. Uh, this indicates a uh, highly uh, significant uh, difference in ADR uh, between uh, city hotel, say between city and uh, resort. And re resort hotel. So therefore, uh, the average price. varies uh, between, let's say varies significantly uh, between the hotel types. That's, that's the insight from there. Okay. Um, 
You can also compare the customer type and the ADR uh, rates. So So for the customer uh, and the ADR, so here, here the objective is to compare the average daily rates between different customer types for each hotel type, city and resort hotel, analyze the pricing difference based on uh, customer categories or customer types. Okay? So for that, uh, ADR customer type, uh, we can, so based on the objective, you're going to group according to the customer type and the hotel type and find the average daily rate for the different customers. So this is the code for that. And then from there, let's, let's just uh, plot or uh, create bar graph uh, for that. So we are creating a bar chart to compare the ADR between customer type for each hotel type. So then this is the uh, the chart we are getting. So you can see among the contract contract customer type, you can see how uh, uh, the average, average daily rate uh, is for contract customer type. You can see that for the city hotel is quite high than uh, uh, for the uh, for the resort hotel. And for the for the for the group customer type, you can see again uh, uh, the city hotel is quite high than the resort. Uh, for the for the when you look at the ADR again for customer type for the different uh, uh, for the transient customer, we can see that again the city. So generally, we can see that um, a city hotel, a city the city hotel. When you look at the ADR comparison. So for the insights, you can see that uh, generally ADR is quite high for city hotel for all customers when you compare that to the uh, resort hotel. So what if we compare ADR and meal type? Mm -hmm. So when you compare the ADR and the meal type, let's first uh, define our objective. So uh, the objective for this place, for this analysis is that uh, So the objective uh, is to compare the average daily rate for the uh, different uh, meal plans offered by the, either the city hotel and uh, the and the uh, resort hotel. So basically, you can see how uh, the the initials uh, stand for. So when we are, are doing this again. Just. Uh, do this so we are going to again group uh, data by meal type and the hotel type then compare the meal adr for that so when we execute this cell uh, you can see that um, so uh, as we wait for this you can see that uh, these are the meal types so these initials uh, these are their, their definitions so you can just go through and see uh, what 
each uh, initial stands for. So basically when we compare, so basically when we compare uh, the ADR for uh, between the different build types for the different hotels, uh, we can see that um, Uh, we can see uh, we can see that um, we can see that uh, uh, for example for BB BB means uh, uh, undefined C that means no mean uh, BB uh, bread and breakfast so bread for bread and breakfast we can see that uh, ADR for if a guest uh, makes a booking for bread and breakfast then you can see that the ADR will be uh, this with uh, these are the mean ADR uh, for the for the for the guest. So you can see it's high when we FB means uh, full board. Full board means it will be quite high for the resort, but uh, less in a uh, city hotel. Uh, but for bread and breakfast, you can see that it's quite high for the city hotel, but uh, it is lower uh, for the for for the uh, resort hotel. So when we compare again. Uh, this one is SC. SC stands for SC undefined uh, no meal package. So when we look at the no meal package, you can see that uh, when you compare the average uh, daily rate for no meal package, you can see that uh, it's a uh, high for city hotel but low for uh, the resort hotel. So that, that's that's what we can see from from this analysis. Okay. Um, Mm, when we move on, let's say compare again uh, for the reserved room. Let's uh, do another uh, 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 average daily rate where when parking is uh, required. So let's compare the average daily rate when parking is uh, required. Let's see what what is the average daily rate for this. When we do require, uh, if a if a guest requires a parking space. So with this code, uh, the first thing is that we are going to filter the uh, data frame. We only include uh, only rows where the parking space is required. So. There's no need of uh, uh, dealing with the uh, with rows where the parking parking space was, was not a necessity. That means it was not uh, required by the guest. So we're just going to do that uh, fil uh, filtering that. So after we are done with uh, after we are done with that uh, filtering, we then calculate the average daily rate for each hotel type when parking space is required, similar to what we we have been doing. Then after that, we can then just move on and uh, display the average daily rate for different hotel types when parking is required. And when we execute this cell, we can, uh, what we get is uh, this is the uh, the new series that we are getting. So we can see that uh, generally for the city hotel, uh, the average daily rate increases. I think uh, earlier on, the average daily rate for the different hotel uh, for the city hotel is uh, 111 uh, when parking space is included uh, we can see that uh, it's 122 so we can see that there is a uh, an increase uh, in the average daily rate when uh, parking space is uh, required for the city hotel and i guess so also for the resort hotel there will be uh, that increase in uh, in uh, in average daily rate when uh, uh, parking rates uh, is required so we can also let's let's uh, do a t test to compare if that uh, compare if uh, that those uh, average daily rates are have a significant uh, their significant uh, difference if uh, we increase the 
if we if a guest requests Paki. So again, we can just do a DRCT hotel. So what we want is the average. Um, no, 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 no. Separate the data. So this data frame uh, will only contain where this parking space is required, okay? So let's do something, eh? Let's see if we can get, uh, let's uh, execute this cell and see if uh, this uh, data frame is what we essentially, hmm, we are getting uh, this, eh? So probably it's uh, uh, only when the parking space is required. So I think we can use it. So let's let's see. Let's try if we can use uh, this. So uh, basically, this uh, we can uh, first do we can first filter. Let us uh, filter. Let us uh, filter the data frame to include only rows where parking space is required. So we can just do this. Uh, parking df. So after we do this, then we, where there is df, we just replace this with the parking df. Just replace this. Um, put the ADR for each hotel type. Um, Okay, so let's see if we can get something. So when we run this, you can see that uh, we are getting a t statistics of this 6.59, 6.95, and and a p value of 3.7 raised to power 10 negative to power negative 12, and so there is a significant difference uh, in ADR uh, between city hotel and resort hotel. We can just add here when when uh, parking is uh, required. We can just add here uh, when parking is uh, required. Right. I hope uh, maybe you can uh, you can get to the comment. Uh, you can comment down below if uh, we have made an error for this. But uh, so this is just a, a quick thinking. Uh, I've just uh, thought mm, maybe if we can add this, you can see. But. Uh, Maybe if uh, there's an, some error for for this, maybe you can reach you can uh, reach down on the comment section and maybe provide how we can uh, uh, go about it. Okay. So, but for now, let's let's assume we are correct that uh, this is the uh, uh, this is, this is the t test result. If you are going to compare the average daily rate when parking is uh, required, okay. Um, mm, so I think we have uh, traversed through ups and downs through uh, various analysis. Uh, this there is one thing that uh, we can add on. Uh, maybe the last thing is all, uh, and that would be all about uh, something to do with the time series analysis. So we are going to compare different metrics with respect to time. And see how the two uh, hotel types. That is the uh, that is the city hotel and the resort hotel are uh, comparing. So let's go to let's just call this uh, time series analysis. So uh, time series analysis. Okay. So time series analysis. So let's see. Uh, what we'll be uh, getting from this. So in the time series uh, analysis, you can start by arrival day of month. So let's let's look into arrival day of month. So with the arrival day of month, what we are trying to uh, achieve with this uh, with this is you can see that. Um, for any given month, any given month, we have a total of 30, 31 days. That's the max. 
uh, 29 days if it's uh, February of Olympia and 28 if okay so uh, we, we, uh, we tend to assume that uh, both the city hotel and the resort hotel have been receiving guests uh, throughout a given month so and a month has uh, a maximum of 31 days so we are going to some arrivals that uh, are, uh, all guests uh, the guests that have been arriving on the first day of the month the second day the third day the fourth day up to the last day of the month and uh, maybe find s something like a trend to see uh, which day in a month uh, what the either the city hotel and the resort hotel uh, getting more guests uh, and again which day of the month they received uh, less guests okay? so let's start by uh, converting uh, arrival uh, arrival date to date to uh, date time uh, format so we did this earlier on but uh, let's uh, let's just uh, do it again so we are targeting or uh, we are creating a new uh, variable arrival date I think a new variable so I think we already have this in the in the arrival date we created one we created one so we are not creating a new column okay so arrival so arrival arrival date Oops. arrival date uh, then now we are going to do so td dot uh, to date time so convert that uh, column into a date time format so df arrival date time in this one arrival date I think we are correct so after we are done with this we can then uh, do an extract uh, day of month so again you can say uh, df then when extracting the day of month so you can say uh, day uh, of month we are extracting that from the arrival date uh, from the arrival the arrival date so end this with the dt dot uh, day dt dot uh, day. I think that's it then after this uh, we can create a new variable where we uh, group where we Here we group uh, the data by uh, day of month and hotel type. And after this, we sum uh, the number of arrivals uh, for for each day and hotel type that's what we're doing here so create a new variable daily arrivals uh, df dot group by the grouping by the day, day of uh, day of month and hotel type hotel, but okay that's okay then outside the brackets we do some uh, we do size then we do and stuff do brackets till uh, After we are done with this, we can then uh, print uh, daily arrivals. 
let's see let's see let's see so when you execute this as you can see uh, this is the result you are getting you are getting uh, the hotel type so the city hotel and the resort hotel this is the day of month so day of month first day second day third day all the way up to 31st that's the maximum number of days we have in a given month then for the city hotel we get the totals uh, of guests that arrived for both the first day uh, the totals, total number of guests that arrive during the first day for city hotel uh, this is the value and for the resort hotel this is the value so uh, then let's uh, let me just print uh, the first five okay so i think by now you understand what we are doing with that then uh, from here uh, uh, let's uh, print uh, this information uh, you, let's use it plotly to display this information so for plotly you can start by uh, reset uh, index so for the reset index we're just going to do daily rivals uh, reset uh, daily rivals uh, dot uh, reset index dot, uh, that index mm. daily just call this daily calls daily set so when we execute this then let's run this So uh, this is the so let's uh, say let's head let's use the head method. Then uh, we use plotly to represent uh, this information. So when plotting, so this is the code create a line graph using plotly dot express. So it depends. Uh, uh, using plotly. So when we execute this. So daily arrivals reset index day of month city hotel resort hotel labels okay so this is the uh, this is the the trend so we can see that uh, in terms of arrivals generally for the city hotel we have high numbers compared to the resort hotel so for example uh, for the first day of the month uh, we can see that uh, city hotel 15 in 690 uh, and uh, oh sorry for the city hotel 15690 for the resort hotel 11 1162 so we can see uh, 15690 for the city hotel uh, 1162 for the resort hotel okay so we can see so with this trend you can now see uh, generally they are just uh, uh, quite uh, they are showing a similar trend similar trend uh, for, uh, for the arrivals okay um, uh, let's do the same for the arri arrival week number uh, so for the arrival uh, week number again uh, uh, for any given year we can see that uh, a year has about uh, uh, close as a year has about 52 53 uh, weeks so again we are just for the weekly arrivals we are uh, grouping according to the arrival week and the hotel type then the size and stack then when we execute this we will find that um, uh, for this let's start using a uh, matplotlib plot this you can see the arrival week for the city hotel so for arrival week one you can see the population for the city hotel and the population for the resort hotel okay so when you execute this so this one i'm using uh plotly no i'm using plt matplotlib so for the matplotlib 
Uh, this is the results that we will be getting. You can see again for the city hotel and the resort hotel. Uh, again, you can see that uh, in terms of arrivals, city hotel had the most of uh, arrivals. So and you can see that um, there was an increase in arrivals, a steady increase uh, up to around uh, uh, 223, 24, 25, 26. Around uh, 26, the week 26, there was uh, this big increase in the number the number of uh, guests so uh, so we can f can see the trend okay so if we were to use uh, plot, uh, plotly uh, this is the chart that we will be getting uh, so for this uh, this is the chart that we are getting uh, basically you can see that uh, uh, let's say a width of uh, about 1000 is enough eh? Uh, when you compare these two, you can just see we are getting the same things and uh, a similar trend. Okay? So this is the weekly arrivals by hotel uh, in a, any given year. Uh, also, let's do uh, arrivals uh, for, for, for a given month, so during a year. So for arrivals during the month, we are trying to sum. We are summing uh, all arrivals uh, uh, So we are summing. So we are extracting the month information from the arrival date column, then are grouping the date arrival month and the hotel uh, the hotel type then comes the number of arrivals for each month for the hotel type yes it's just the same thing that we were doing earlier but we're just changing from the day we have changed, changed that to month uh, the previous one was uh, uh, for the weeks let's see for month we can say For months again we are seeing a similar trend uh, during this time uh, between the sixth month and uh, this this uh, that uh, jump and then uh, it cools down up to uh, around month nine so I think this is uh, during the summer and this uh, thing uh, during the summer uh, during the summer that's why we are getting these uh, high spikes in uh, guests okay Again, uh, uh, during the this time of the uh, around uh, during the summer, that's why we are, uh, that's when we are getting a lot of uh, guests, and also maybe during uh, the December holidays. Okay, during December again, you can see that uh, there is that trend uh, starts going up again. Okay, so that was the time series analysis. Uh, again, there is one thing that we can also calculate. Uh, uh, this one is uh, for the ADR again so we can uh, calculate the monthly ADR for each hotel type let's see how the average daily rate fluctuates uh, with time okay so So for fluctuations of the average daily rate area throughout the year so let's just let's change this uh, so how ADR be, uh, uh, behaves or fluctuates during the year so we can see that um, for city hotel this uh, blue and the red is for the resort hotel 
So in terms of the average daily rate, you can see again uh, during the when we have a lot of guests, guests you can see that uh, the average daily rate also increases and uh, decreases as the number of uh, guests uh, decreases. Okay. So, um, so basically, uh, I think we have now reached the end of uh, this exploratory data analysis. So. So I think uh, we have now reached the end of this uh, exploratory data analysis. So we can see that uh, we have tackled a very uh, uh, a lot of uh, we have uh, done a lot of analysis with this data, and from those analyses, we can see that uh, we have we were able to get some insights uh, and we were able to make some conclusions uh, based on this uh, hotel bookings uh, data. So in terms of uh, ex ex exploratory data analysis, I think this is a, a good example. So we are able to do a lot of analysis. We are able to uh, obtain those insights. So when you are trying to build a model, so you can refer to this uh, the insight that we try to obtain from this data. And uh, when you are trying to build a model, you can try to build a model based on these patterns, this uh, conclusion, these insights, insights that we are able to get uh, from this uh, from this exploratory uh, data analysis. So it's, it has been a rigorous exercise, uh, but um, I think by now, I think we basically have that idea for, uh, for the steps that you can take to conduct uh, uh, exploratory data analysis given the data set that uh, you might be dealing with. So uh, these are just a few of the steps. There are uh, many things that are usually involved in a, a data analysis. So as you practice more, uh, maybe you can uh, uh, gain more experience uh, with this. So I think uh, that's it for for me today. That's all for my uh, for my end today. So uh, I will end it uh, here. So and before we get we sign off uh, again, please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, we are welcoming you to this uh, wonderful community. Hit that notification bell so that you never miss any of our uh, any of our updates. Uh, if you have any concerns, any queries, you can uh, reach to us through the comment section. Uh, and as you sign off, please uh, give this video a thumbs up. Once again, I'm very grateful and very thankful for your time, for your, for your eyes, for, your, uh, for finding time to, uh, to watch and uh, watch through these uh, videos. And I'm very grateful. Uh, grateful. I'm very grateful for that. Sorry. So, uh, with that much said, uh, until next time, see you. Bye bye.